What's going on, Geminites? It's your boy, Gemmin, and I'm finally here with another recent reads. This time, we're going to talk about the Zero Year, A Crisis in Time Omnibus. I know it's been a while since I've done one of these. I've just been so busy with single issues, and honestly, this one kind of had me stuck for a while. But I'm going to give you my thoughts and my opinions on this omnibus. Before we get started, make sure you are subscribed to the channel for daily content. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss a video or a live stream, and hit the like button if you enjoyed this video. There's going to be slight spoilers here, but if you're new to reading this, I don't think it's going to really hurt your experience. There's no big surprises here, except for kind of like the main villain, but uh, I still think it's enjoyable, so don't worry about spoilers. So, what is Zero Hour, A Crisis in Time? The main story is written by Dan Jurgens, and this is really a follow-up to Crisis on Infinite Earths. Which is funny, because I feel like you don't hear too much about this run. It doesn't kind of fall into a Crisis category. But basically, Crisis on Infinite Earths was an excuse for DC to take all of these different titles and combine them into one shared universe. Because prior to that, all these things were going on in these titles, but didn't necessarily cross over to the other title, right? So what was happening in Batman wasn't happening in Superman, wasn't happening in Justice League. So this storyline was kind of an excuse to play with all those different versions of those characters again. This is really a five-issue miniseries, but what happens in Zero Hour also affects all the other titles in DC Comics at that time. So that's why we got an omnibus. That's why there is a slew of creators because everybody had their own book and the Zero Hour event affected them. So what happens in Zero Hour? Well, that's a little bit confusing. The main villain uh, is first this character, Extant, and he's kind of a cool little design, a little bit of a Spawn vibe going on there, uh, and he's really Hawk from Hawk and Dove, but he gets these like temporal powers, and he's able to kind of destroy uh, the DC universe and bring these other characters from different multiverses into the main DC universe. So when we do some overhead shots, we get a lot of cool interactions like... Batman has like Frank Miller's Batman mixing with Adam West's Batman mixing with modern age Batman. So there are some cool things that happen in the tie-ins. In the main story, basically what this is, it's basically a parallax Hal Jordan Green Lantern story. That's who we find out is pulling the strings behind everything. He is so overstruck with guilt over destroying Coast City during the events of Reign of the Superman. He wants to reverse what happened. So even though he's the big bad villain, he really wants to just put things back the way they were because he's so, like I said, overcome with grief. A lot of cool stuff there. We get to kind of see um, the erasing of timelines, the aging of the JSA, uh, mixing these uh, different versions of characters together. And we get this very epic conclusion that deals with the Big Bang. We go back to the Big Bang and reset everything. And it's, it's a whole power struggle with Parallax trying to reset everything and the heroes trying to allow nature to reset things and put everything back to normal. That's pretty much it. That's the gist of what goes on here. Now, what are my thoughts on it? I think that uh, reading the miniseries is pretty much enough, right? And, and it's kind of uh, fun the way they did it. They released it from... They released it backwards, issue 4, 3, 2, 1, and then 0. And that's how it was released when it first came out. So you can read Zero Hour. You don't have to read all the other tie-ins. They don't really play a big part. It's just kind of what's happening in those individual heroes' lives during the event. There are some really, really good tie-ins, and I have them marked, so we'll, we'll kind of highlight them when we do the overshot view. And there's some tie-ins that if you're not reading that run... You're going to be lost, and it's not going to be enjoyable. There was a couple of them in here that I was like, oh, this is tough to get through. And it's really the reason why it took me so long to read this. So I don't know if we'll, we'll highlight those. I'll probably see a couple of them that I feel like you can just skip altogether and still enjoy this book. This is my favorite era of comics when it comes to art. This is right before we went digital, but comic art was at its peak, in my opinion. You're talking 80s to 90s artwork here. So uh, I really dug it. I really dug the uh, Green Arrow almost silent issue that they had. But I think that pretty much wraps it up. I, I did enjoy it for the most part. There are a lot of tie-ins you could skip, but there's a lot of tie-ins you should definitely take the time to read. With that being said, let's jump into the overshot. We'll take a look at some highlights, some, some lows, and we'll take a look at what extras come in the back of the book as well. 
All right, so taking a good look at the dust jacket, this is the 25th anniversary omnibus. Again, I love the artwork here. All the DC heroes on the front here. Then you got the villain extant on the back there. You got Spectre, Hawkman, a lot of good stuff. I like that big bright spine, looks great. And you have the back here. All this heroes fading away. $150 cover price on this. If you shop at places like I do online, like CheapGraphicNovels.com, you'll get these bad boys for like 50% off. Like I said, Dan Jurgens and Jerry Ordway uh, basically are responsible for the miniseries. And then you have all these other titles and their own creative teams happening at the same time. Inside of the dust jacket, very cool. It's over. Your time is over. All time is over. This is zero hour. Dun, dun, dun. You get the wraparound hardcover here. Everyone's fighting Extant. He's the one that's kind of causing all the trouble seemingly until we get that Hal Jordan reveal. But uh, I like the wraparound covers. I think they look great. I told you, he's got Spawn vibes, right? So let's open up the, the, the inside. We'll see what the beginning looks like and then we'll start looking at my tabs here. So here you go. Table of contents, always helpful. We get a forward here. Who's the forward by? Dan Jurgens. Well, that makes sense. Then it starts here, some zero. So this, I believe, was just a short little tale. You get this Wave Rider guy, and you learn a lot about him. Um, you, you know, I think what happens is Hawk turns into Monarch, and then he turns into Extant. It's a little bit confusing. But Wave Rider plays a, a big role. I wasn't even familiar with the character before this. So it looks like, yeah, a little like prologue with this whole thing. Uh, Death of the Outsiders. Outsiders is definitely a title that you didn't need to read to understand this story. But the first thing that really caught my eye was this Detective Comics uh, 878. I thought this issue was so dope. Kind of mixing together our modern Batman with previous iterations. So let's... Oops, let's go ahead and uh, see what that looks like. Is that the is that this issue? I mean, I think maybe I really dug the artwork for sure. Yeah, I remember this now. So our modern Batman tries to go back to Wayne Manor, but he's he's being time displaced. So that wasn't the mixture with the Frank Miller Batman. That was just that was just a really great tie into this. We get some steel stuff. I always like steel ever since uh, Reign of the Superman. Then I highlighted uh, here's the first issue, which is funny enough, issue four for Zero Hour. Now, I'm trying to remember why did I highlight this stuff. I mean, the artwork is great. Yeah, and Batgirl's one of the first ones who comes uh, universe displaced, so I should say. Well, I think maybe this is when we first see the different. Is it? No. Yeah. The Mobius chair. So here goes Hawkman, and he kind of starts flipping through all the different iterations of himself. I love the artwork, though, in, in, in the main title. I mean, the art, artwork was great. Here goes our villain. Here we see Batman changing from, like, Golden Age Batman flipping back and forth. I, I highlighted this because this looks just like the uh, Sideshow statue that's coming out. But you can see, like, here's the Frank Miller version of Batman, the Dark Knight Returns version. And Superman interacting with him. So, so it was very cool to see, like, all the different versions mixing together and trying to figure out what's going on. You got, like, the Sam Keith-looking Batman, the the 60s version so that that's like the whole excuse to kind of play with these characters together right now why did I highlight this because it looks like death row records I don't remember the Green Lantern stuff here was dope man the Kyle Rayner stuff towards the end is super important original Green Lantern so you kind of mixing everybody together Green Lantern core I love this uh, spread looks dope Uh, 
list. What else did I highlight here? Stuff like this was an easy skip. Like, you don't have to read this stuff. Who is this? Not even sure. I'm not sure why I even highlighted this, but artwork is great. Oh, you have, um, this is where Guy Gardner is his character, Warrior. And here we get the parallax stuff, so very cool to have this stuff in the omnibus. Justice League Task Force was one that really was unnecessary. Oh, I really did dig this Robin issue, though. Where you have uh, Dick Grayson from the past comes to Tim Drake in the future, and they, they kind of have a little adventure together. It's, it's pretty cool stuff. I, I definitely dug the Bat Family tie-ins the most, I would say. The Catwoman story was kind of lame. Then you got this battle between uh, Parallax, Hal Jordan, and Kyle Rayner. Then you get the beginning of Tomorrow issues, which is kind of like a couple of epilogue issues. There was a... Um, a damage one... Because this character played a big role in helping um, reset the universe. So he had an issue before the last issue of Zero Hour. And then he had one of these Beginning of Tomorrow issues. There was a Superman one. Which is kind of just like everybody getting back to normal. The epilogues were kind of weak in my opinion. Alright, let's see what extras this book comes with. So it starts here. And you get a lot of the promotional material. You get a timeline of the DC Universe. Which is cool. Here's some like a zero month thing, which looks like it was this free, that free sampler. Just like promo stuff. It's very cool that they throw this in at the end of the omnibus though. The Legionnaire tie-in was pretty lame. The covers and promotional material. So here we get a lot of dope artwork. This is for cover three. It was cover one. It was a hardcover cover. What is this? The 1994 trade paperback cover. A lot of great covers here. This is the omnibus cover, which was a promotional poster. Very cool. That was a poster too, which is the same as the wraparound hardcover. Top secret. So just some extras here. You get some scripts, a lot of different logo designs. Then you get like some pages and covers, which is always cool to see for extras. Cool stuff. Alright guys, I hope you enjoyed my review of the Zero Hour Omnibus. Drop me a comment below on the next Omnibus you want to see me read and review. One that I haven't already done, obviously. And I have a couple of ideas that I'm working on uh, as well. Make sure you guys are subscribed to the channel. Hit the notification bell so you don't miss one of these videos. So that you don't miss a live stream. And if you like this video, go ahead and slap that like for your boy. Appreciate you watching. As always, stay minty fresh. Peace.